Okay, so the first thing we want to do is go with an AcroRip 10 here. I need to figure out how these lines are configured before we start adding inks to these carts. You write this down so I don't get confused here. Matt Black. Oh, that's why. So, cyan, yellow, light cyan. That's that's where the hiccup was. Matte black, photo black. It's weird because I'm saying black, but I'm t writing K. Um, now we pick up with magenta, light black, light light black. Light magenta. I still don't like that though. Let's do. I want all of the white channels to be on this side. So. Okay, so we're back here. Uh, I reached out to someone in the forums by the name of Brian as well as uh, Jonathan. I'll spare their last names. So we have the configuration here for the printer as cyan, yellow, light cyan, uh, matte key or matte black, photo black, magenta, light black, light light black, and light magenta. But we need to switch this over to uh, where all of the white channels will be handled by the right side of the printer, which will replace magenta, light black, light light black, and light magenta. We have cyan, yellow, magenta matte black won't be used so we'll keep this cleaning solution in this channel and for the photo black or the photo key uh, we're actually going to use the black DTF ink um, so I was told that the matte black and the photo black operate from the same ink line or the same they have two separate ink lines but they uh, swap through the channels similar to the Epson 3880 um, so this is the alleged configuration that I'm supposed to use and I also was told that I need to use the um, SC, the Epson SC6000 drivers with an AcroRip even though it says that the uh, 7890 is uh, supported we're going to go with the setup here so with an AcroRip it's going to be the configuration for the inks again so that you can get a visual we're going to set this up manually as cyan yellow magenta key for matte black we're putting cleaning solution I'm sorry we're using the photo black and that again that's if your printer is already set up to uh, it, if it's already switched to photo black if it's defaulting to matte you're going to use matte uh, so I'll start over here. It's going to be cyan, yellow, magenta, uh, cleaning solution in the matte channel for me. It might not be the same for you. And the photo key or photo black is going to be your black channel for the DTF inks. And then all of the channels on the right side of the printer would be converted to uh, for DTF use for white ink. And that's going to replace the magenta, light key or light black, light light black, light magenta and that will be your ink set up for the white channels okay so we need to use this chart here I can set this to the side to where I can still see it So let's set these up in order. Uh, in the contractor world, we have a saying that says measure twice and cut once. So there should be any, shouldn't be any discrepancy in terms of um, whether we get this wrong or not. So I'm gonna start from the bottom up. So it'll be light magenta, which would replace our, uh, white will replace light magenta, light, light black.
light black or LK, light key. Next will be magenta. Next will be photo black. Remember, we're skipping, or I'm skipping matte black because my printer defaults to photo black. So I'll set this to the side and I'll just have an extra cart. But for you, if you haven't ordered yet, uh, I will plug the power of the printer on and find out which channel it defaults to and then you know that you'd need a set of cleaning carts for that um, but you don't have to necessarily order that extra uh, black whether it be photo or matte um, so to pick up where we left off for me on photo I set the matte aside next will be light cyan yellow and then we will start with cyan Cyan, we're swapping out for cyan. Cyan DTF ink. This will be the same uh, procedure as when we filled the cleaning solution, but it's a little more vital now that we're using actual ink. So we don't want, uh, we want to minimize the air being introduced into the lines here. We have our chip resetter as before. We'll need a priming syringe for each channel. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. No, these will be the priming syringes. These are 10 milliliters. We don't need the, the, the big mamas yet. The big mamas will be for extracting the inks for each channel, for each channel. And we're using inks from a cloud. And you don't wanna shake it. We're just going to tilt these. A lot of people say tilt, but the least amount of bubbles you introduce into the line, the better your prints will be. You won't get any gaps in, in, in the way your inks are laying down. And we're starting with cyan. And I went with McLeod because I'm told that they have ICC profiles for their inks. And we'll find out if that's true or not here in a second. Try not to make too much of a mess here. All right, so we need a syringe. And these are 60 mil, these are big mamas. And uh, we also have Okay, we also have the uh, four inch long uh, dispensing needles for these syringes. These are in the description here, the video. And what this is for, for obvious reasons, it's going to screw into here, into your 60 mil. That way you can just, you know, look at that. You've got the least amount of effort into getting this drawn up and to fill these carts 
So I'm going to take this here. Remember, I believe these are 350 milliliter carts here. I didn't want to order all of these funnels, but you may want to have uh, some funnels available. But I don't like using the funnels for these. So I'm going to speed this up. Okay. So what we're going to do is just kind of try to clean up our mess here. And I'm going to put the fill hole back in. Now the next step would be to grab one of our 10 milliliter syringes here. And we also have what I showed you earlier, and these are the uh, the priming tips from Inkjet Mall as well. This is going to make this easier so that we don't rupture the the inlet port here. Basically, this thing, the the wide or fat end is going over securely. That's to ensure that no air gets introduced. And again, we are pressing this in and drawing until we get solid. And you can see it's filled the chamber here. It's filled that chamber and the, the cyan is ready to go. Um, aside from the fact that we haven't reset the cart. Now we can wait until that turns green. Cyan's ready to go. All right. The final step would be to remove the air valve for when you're printing and now let's speed this up All right, so we are resetting the last cart. And then we will reinstall these and remove the cleaning solution carts, the maintenance carts, and I'll actually put these uh, air vent plugs back in to the maintenance carts we're not using, with the exception of the matte black, since uh, we will keep that cart in the printer so all that's left to do is to prime this last one you can probably see it fill the chamber here it really should be like that okay And I chose to keep the bags that these carts came in so that I can utilize them as, uh, you know, to house these. Because if you put them in the same bag, 
uh, it'll contaminate the blunt knit, uh, tips. So when you go to stick it back into the, um, the ink bottle, it'll it'll be contaminated. It'll contaminate your colors. All right. So here are eight carts. And then we'll have to install them and then run another purge so that the ink can replace the cleaning solution that we have in the ink tubes. All right. Let's hope this is all correct here. I forgot to push. You can see how much doing a purge actually uses for certain channels versus other. This should be it for the white. So we have our photo black. <coughs> Leaving matte black in, the cleaning solution so it doesn't introduce air to the lines as mentioned before. Our light cyan is now magenta. Yellow is yellow, and our cyan is still cyan. Okay, we are in maintenance or uh, technician mode still. So what I'm going to do is try to do either another initial fill but that utilized a lot of ink which that's okay uh, but I don't know what would be better either to do the initial fill or whether it's gonna dump too much ink into the tank so let's just try it that'll be the most cost-effective and uh, especially in terms of time as well so we're gonna do the initial fill Okay, so we just finished with the second initial fill and I have to go run some errands here in a second and then we will try to run this and then we will try to run this um, first print and see what happens with the channels and if something's wrong, we'll fix it. Stay tuned.